Oh my, aren't you a beautiful color? And it really brings out the beauty of your eyes. Why, thank you for the compliment. I don't have any eyes though. I'm a tube of paint. Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor, everybody. Today we're going to talk about complementary colors. Now I can't stress how important this is for learning how to mix colors and use colors effectively in your paintings. If you actually get into and start doing the things that I will do in this video, you'll find it a lot of fun and very rewarding and the knowledge is powerful. You're looking really fetching today, my friend. Oh, thank you. You like the shirt? I appreciate the compliment. It's just black though. Never mind. So without further ado, let's get into it. Well, when we talk about complementary colors, it's very important to understand where colors lie on the color wheel. Now, if you're not familiar with the color wheel and the colors, you should familiarize yourself with one. It, there are a lot of commercial ones out there on the market, and I do recommend you have uh, something for reference. The different ones will have useful information. This is actually a watercolor wheel, so they tell you what you would get to each color as you move this ring around, what you'd get by adding water, what you'd get by adding black, blue, yellow, blah, blah, blah. There's some uh, color theory terminology in here defined, and on the back they show you a tint, a tone, and a shade. And this is fine as far as it goes, but I do think it's important to take the colors that you have and make your own color wheel just to be able to familiarize yourself where they sit, and how you can use the complementary colors for mixing. Complementary color mixing is just very, very important. Now, for instance, I'm going to make a color wheel. And let's, for my yellow, I'm going to use this. This is a Hansa yellow. For my red, I'm going to use this. It's a Pyrol red. These are all M. Graham paints. For my blue, I'm going to use a, a Cerulean blue. Now, those are the primaries. Primaries are the colors that you can't mix. No colors will mix to give you a, a true blue, a true red, and a true yellow. They make up every other color. So all the secondaries, these are the secondaries, orange, green, and purple. And then the tertiaries. That, those terms are not important. You just need to know that these colors can be done by mixing. Or in making a, a color wheel, if you have something in a tube that's close, uh, you can go ahead and use it. I think I have a pretty good, pretty close orange, so I don't think I need to mix that. I have a really good purple, this ultramarine violet makes a decent purple. I even have a good red violet, which I think is this uh, quinacridone violet. So I'm going to go ahead and use that rather than mix it. I think the scarlet pyrrole will make a good red orange, so I'm just going to use that. The phthalo green will make a good blue green, I think. So I'll probably use that. The green I'm going to have to mix. It's, it's more of like a permanent green light, which I don't have, or permanent green. Uh, the sap green is close to a yellow green. I can add to that and get... I'm probably going to have to mix the blue violet and the yellow orange. But this way, as I make my color wheel, I'm going to be familiar with the, the main colors that I have and how I can combine those and use those as complements. Let me quickly show you how I'm going to do this. Okay, as you lay this out, you don't have to be perfect with it in your circle or anything, but you do want to get your color spaced pretty well. In other words, each color between another color, you don't want it to lean more heavily to one hue than to another. So the best way to do this is to start with your primaries your yellow, blue, and red. Then fill in with your secondaries, and then fill those in with your tertiary colors. Because you have 12 colors all total, when you add those together, it lays out nicely in the form of a clock, so you can use that as a guide. And I'm just dotting the color in from a tube. When I have a tube color that I don't have to mix, you can mix these off a of palette. Just use whatever you have. And I'm also tinting them out just so I can see them in their lighter tinted forms. And it helps me visualize when I look at the colors across the wheel from each other. Now the definition of a complement is anything that 
lies opposite a color on the color wheel. So purple is the complement of yellow and vice versa. Red is the complement of green. Orange is the complement of blue. And the same goes for the tertiary colors. If they're perfect complements, you'll get basically a neutral. A dark gray, or depending on how dark the colors are, even a black. So essentially, complementary colors cancel each other out. They mute each other, they dull each other, they neutralize each other. But that's so important in color mixing, I can't even begin to tell you. What do you see missing on this color wheel? You're missing the burgundies, the, the mauves, the real pretty dove grays, green grays, blue grays. You don't see any of the browns. Where are those colors on the color wheel? Well, they're right in here. Depending on how you mix these colors, you can just achieve some beautiful color harmony. You can also avoid some muting and killing of very vibrant colors when you don't want to do that. You need to know when not to use a complement as well as when to use a complement. Let's start with a very common one, the red-green. This is a pyro red and this is a green that I mix. We're going to look at three things primarily you can do with complements. And really there are a lot more, but the, I'm just going to sort of showcase three. Okay, so here's the green. Here's the red. Start mingling them together. See what we have along the spectrum. If you see right in here, you get some brown. So one of the first things you can do with complementary colors is to dull primary or brilliant colors. Now you see I took this pyrrole red and I added a little bit of green and I've got a really nice kind of a scarlet, crimson, I don't know what you would call it, maybe a burgundy. So lesson one with complementary colors, they make great duller Darker, in some cases, depending on the color, more muted, kind of duskier tones. Just a beautiful little burgundy right there. Let's add a little more green, see what happens. And it's turning darker. Down here where I have more green, see that? It's almost a really rich red-brown. Let's tint that out and see what it, what it looks like. Very nice. Now you could search and search and maybe not find a color like that in a tube, but it's just a gorgeous burgundy, kind of a carmine, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Go back to the red and that even more green. See what we get. We have enough green. Complements will neutralize each other. Look at that. Just a beautiful kind of a Warm dove gray. Isn't that nice? You can make grays by tinting black and adding very subtle hues to black or to Payne's gray or something other. But the total uh, choices that you have when you're working with complements is just amazing. Let's add a little more green. Push it further to the cool side. See that? It's, it's, it's a very kind of a dusty sage color. Let's we'll start with green this time. You'll see that? Got a nice kind of an ivy green. Not as intense, which is okay because the salo green is incredibly intense. So. Start adding some red. You're getting, oh, I don't know, kind of an evergreen color. As it go darker, I would call it like an ivy green. Doesn't really matter what you call it. They're just some, some beautiful, unique hues. And I'm telling you, you can play with this 
like literally all day long. It's it's just so much fun. So muted tones, muted colors by adding the complement, grays, neutrals, all kinds of interesting combinations. I'll push the green over to the warmer side by adding a little yellow. We have almost a reddish umber color. Now one of the things you have to be careful with is doing this with opaque or semi-opaque watercolors. I primarily use transparent watercolors and I don't have a problem with mud. If you're using too much of an opaque watercolor and you're not tinting it out enough, you're going to end up with some pretty muddy looking colors. But right now these are, are fairly luminous still and transparent. And you can see by adding a little yellow, it took it out of the neutral range and turned it into a brown. And that's my third lesson. So working with complements, darkening or muting your color by adding the complement, creating really beautiful neutral tones and creating browns. You can create some of the most amazing browns with complements. Now what I want you to do is to try this. This is a challenge. Um, you will just improve your color sense tenfold by doing these kind of exercises. By making yourself a color wheel with your own existing colors and then going through and, and experimenting with complements. This is another one which I really like and that's the purple and yellow complement. Let's take a look at that. And here just briefly you can see I've done some of the same things with purple, yellow, and orange yellow just getting some neat effects kind of a olive green to a very muted yellow to a nice little dusty kind of lavender and when i use the orange yellow i'm producing kind of a sienna brown possibilities are endless this is stuff you don't necessarily have to remember or memorize you just need to play with it experiment well, that was just a real short primer on complementary colors. The combination possibilities are endless. It's just, just really a lot of fun. And it's neat to see and demonstrate to yourself what colors will do. Just a reminder, it's also good to know what complements will do to you that you don't want. If you're trying to paint a brilliant scarlet flower somewhere, be careful. Be careful about adding compliments that will dull your color down in the shadows. Being informed about wh what will happen with colors is the best way to utilize them and start mixing. So there you have it. Get those colors out, start mixing up some compliments and see what you can come up with. You'll surprise yourself. I mean, you'll just come up with some astounding colors. And just the beauty of some of the grays and browns that you can get especially if you're using transparent colors because the colors will be so luminous, will amaze you, I think. Just give me a post below. Let me know what kind of success you're having. If this has been a help to you, hope you'll give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more of this content, why not subscribe? Thanks, everyone. Great to have you viewing. We'll see you next time.